Hello, this is Roland. Welcome. Today I want to talk about uh, relationships, which is what most people come to my sites, websites, uh, with questions about relationships. That's what it's all about, is people, isn't it? Somebody once said the trouble is people. <laughs> okay. Well, it really is all about people. Remember the Ten Commandments? Um, they, and they asked Jesus, they said, what, uh, the first half of the Ten Commandments was, was your relationship with God, and then the second half was your relationship with other people. Okay? They asked Christ, what, what are the most, imp what's the most important, what is, the, what is the law? And he said, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. So now let's look at this and see the problem, the contradiction. Something is wrong. We're supposed to love our neighbor. Okay. You're supposed to love your husband, your wife, your mom, your dad, your kids. Okay. If you, if there are hurt feelings, hostility anger, resentment, blame, uh, grudges, unfinished business with people in your own family, then something is wrong. Okay, something is wrong. The people who are closest to you are the ones that you should have the most forgiveness for. I remember uh, Ann Landers once said, Ann Landers was a a uh, newspaper columnist who wrote a daily newspaper column for many, many years. Appeared all over the country in newspapers. That was back when people read newspapers. Everybody read the newspaper. A lot of people, first thing they wanted to do, or one of the first things was to read Ann Lander's column. People would send in questions and she would give her advice. Then Dear Abby did the same. They were sisters, you know. Dear Abby did the same thing. But I remember Ann Landers once said that you should be as polite, as well, as mannered to people in your own family as you would be as you are out in the world with strangers. See, when we go out in the world, what? We, act, we dress nice, we act nice, okay? But at home sometimes we're slovenly, rude, unkempt, See? Well, that's bad enough. But even worse, we're mean, hateful, impatient, uh, harboring a grudge against our husband or our wife or your kids, impatient with your kids. Your kids resent their parents. Of course, they're tempted to resent their parents. Okay, so let's talk about relationships. What's the number one thing you need to watch out for? It's resentment. Watch out for resentment and let resentment go. Resentment is a little bit of hate and judgment. Okay? And that includes anger. First comes resentment, then comes anger. Okay? A lot of people suppress their anger. A lot of men do that. They get angry and they suppress it. And they walk around and don't say anything. A man can become a complete wimp. You could have a great big man, football player. Okay, who's an absolute, complete wimp at home because he suppresses his anger. Suppress, suppress, suppress. It becomes a conditioned response because he's angry all the time, so he just suppresses and he walks around on eggshells. And, of course, he wants to be a people pleaser and be popular, which is another mistake. But the main thing is he, he doesn't say anything. He doesn't speak up because he's afraid anger is going to come out. But the problem is people don't respect him. The fact that they don't respect him makes him even angrier. And then one day he topples over with a heart attack. Everybody wonders why. Women tend to have a problem with judgment. Anger also. Anger and judgment and resentment. All three, yes. But um, Judgment seems to be a little bigger part when it comes to, uh, to women. Uh, and here's the reason why. There's a reason for it. Okay? The reason is that, remember, it all began in the Garden of Eden. Adam was weak. He was ambitious. He doubted God. 
disobeyed God. He failed. He got him booted out of paradise. He was a failure. Okay? He didn't love Eve. If he'd have loved Eve, he would have known that it was wise to do what Father said. But he was he was selfish. See, he wanted to be a big man. So he used Eve. He used the temptation that was operating through her. And the serpent used Eve, so she was used. See, a lot of women, they feel used. So he failed, got him booted out of paradise. That was a big trauma at the beginning of the human race, a great big trauma. And we all seem to have a memory of the Garden of Eden. Okay? So women, so women sort of have a memory. I remember one time I was reading a book about um, animal behavior, and it talked about uh, birds. If you if you got a um, piece of cardboard, dark colored cardboard, and cut it into the silhouette shape of a hawk, okay, and then you move that cardboard around above the birds, then they would react in fear because they th feel they fear they felt it was a hawk, see so hovering around. They have a genetic memory of a hawk, okay, being danger. Well, women have a, have a memory of men failing. And then, to make matters worse, all she's ever known are failing men. Her dad failed her. He wasn't there for her. Her dad failed her mom, okay. She went out in the world looking for love. And what did she find? Use and abuse, okay, from men, at the hands of men. So all she's ever known are failing men, wrong men, okay, wimpy men, violent men, see, users, egotistical men seeking to use her to support their ego and failing. See, an ambitious man is a failure too. It's okay to be industrious. See, there's a difference between being industrious and being ambitious. Being industrious is good. Being ambitious means to uh, do things to build up your ego. And a lot of men are ambitious, just like Adam was. Remember, he was ambitious. He wanted to play God, wanted to be God, wanted to try his hand at doing things his own way. See? And he used Eve to support him in that. So ever since men have, re have required women to support them in their ambition. Okay? But the problem is with, with ambitious men, the woman supports him in his ambition. Okay, so maybe he maybe he succeeds and he makes a lot of money or something. But then eventually he becomes married to his money, becomes married to his work. See that he trans she was a t he used her as a temptation source instead of loving her. He used her. Okay, and then he transferred his allegiance from her to the new temptation, work, money, power. See or another woman. Or the bartender, always something to support his ego. So that's all that she has ever known. So now you see why women can't help but judge men. See, and then men are weak and they are failures, and so she judges the man. And then later he proves her right. See, so how can she help? Okay, but ladies, for your own health, for your own well-being, spiritual well-being, mental well-being, emotional well-being, even physical well-being, since judgment and anger and resentment are not good for us physically, you must let go of resentment. Okay? Let it go. In other words, and judgment. If he's wrong, then see that he's wrong. If he's imperfect, see it. Just don't resent him for it. A lot of women get trapped into supporting a wrong man because they're guilty. See, they resent him, judge him and resent him, and then they feel guilty for the resentment and judgment, which are wrong, and so they try to be extra nice. And then they serve him, and the nicer they are to him, the more spoiled he becomes, the more he takes advantage, and then they resent him all over again. So she gets trapped into that relationship of supporting wrong men. It happens to a lot of women. Happens to almost all women, actually, because all men are failures, okay? myself included. Some men wake up, realize that they're failures, and cry out for answers. Cry out to their Creator for answers, okay? and learn not to not to look to the world, not to look to a woman to be his support. See, a man should look to God. He must should look within. Have an invisible means of support. In other words, God is his support. What's right is right. Truth is self-evident. When he sees what's right, he knows in his heart what's right. 
okay then he has principle on him okay and he does his duty okay he does what's right and he doesn't look to other people for support okay then now he can he can love her now because he doesn't need her love see if he needs her love to support him then what will happen is he will become dependent on her support you know how a lot of men become like grazed animals when they don't get their fix they don't get their whatever they're looking for their drug or their sex they become like animals not good okay a man must have all, must look to within to his creator for support principle to honor and not look to others okay stand on his own two feet be self-reliant then he can give love now he, he doesn't need love he can give love that's what his wife and his kids need and they don't need emotional love what they need is fatherly love love agape love okay all right she w needs to know that he appreciates her as a person okay now uh, so she gets trapped through her resentment into being the enabler, okay, into being, um, see, it's uh, the codependent, relate. see how that is? So this goes on sometimes in some dysfunctional relationships, and the kids suffer, goes on and on. She keeps, he, he goes and messes up, and then she takes him back and messes up, too. So it gives her power, okay, he begs you to forgive him, he, see, she's his woman god. See, gives her power, but it's not power that, that she wants. Okay, she doesn't want to be, she just, she doesn't want to be saddled with all the responsibility and have this baby husband always messing up and coming back. And so, of course, some women revel in that role. They do. But the whole family then goes to rack and ruin. Husband becomes worse and weaker. And see, it's not good. Good women don't like that sort of a relationship. Okay. So if you begin to wake up and you see that that's been happening to some extent, which it happens in most, maybe all relationships to some extent, then you can begin to uh, turn things around. The first thing to do is to let go of resentment. Okay, that's the number one thing. Because if you're resentful toward your husband, okay, you're angry and resentful toward him, then it colors your you can't see clearly okay so first you need to stand back I have meditations that are helpful I have a new meditation it's called the easy meditation it's so beautiful it helps you to stand back and be become more objective look at things objectively okay it could be very helpful to you my books are helpful I've written several books my most popular books the myths and mysteries of marriage this is an excellent book a lot of people get it a lot of people have said it's been helpful. It explains it all. Okay. Myths and Mysteries of Marriage. Here's another book I wrote. I don't talk about it very often. It's called uh, Forbidden Food. The Legacy of Paradise Lost and the Promise of Redemption. See, a lot of people have food problems. A lot of people have food problems because they look to food to love them. Okay. Then they become dependent on it. Food doesn't offer them a, tr a true good love. Okay, it betrays them. So they have a love-hate relationship with food. So this is a very good book, and it also talks about the Garden of Eden, how food was involved. Remember, food was involved. And finally, this book here, "Putting the Forever Back in Love," just excellent. It's an excellent book, "Putting the Forever Back in Love." Um, this is a good read for people who are married, maybe five, ten years, and issues have developed. Also has a lot of chapters on parenting in here. It's a very good book. They're all good. Okay. If you had to start with one of them, first one to read, I would start with The Myths and Mysteries of Marriage. Okay. So let's go over the ground quickly again. First thing is to watch out for resentment. Let it pass. Don't indulge it. Let it pass. Okay. Watch for it. There's the resentment. Let it pass. Same thing with judgment. It's okay to see that another person is in error. It's okay to discern. You know, the difference between discerning and judging. You can discern the error, but just don't hate the person. Don't resent the person. Okay? That's the, your, 
Number one line of defense. See, your, resent your own resentment hurts you more than anything that someone could do to you. So watch out for that. Then you can get uh, any of these books, read them, listen to some of my audio, watch some of my videos on relationships. See, that'll, give, that'll really be a good, uh, like a basic training. Your eyes will be opened to see what's happening between men and women. Then you'll say, oh, I see, I see, I see. You'll see what ha what's happening to you, what happened to your parents, ha all over the world, everywhere you go. You go to Cambodia, India, Nigeria, South Africa, Fiji Islands, Trinidad, Tobago, Canada, New York City, <laughs> okay, um, Hawaii, um, Egypt, okay. <laughs> Go any country in the world, it's the same thing. A man woman relationship. Okay, it'd be weird. Your eyes could really be open. It could be a wonderful education for you to really see what is happening. And then it'll give you understanding. Then you'll see what's happening instead of taking it personally. Okay, you'll see that your husband is just a man. Okay, and you'll see how. Um, the ancient um, theme that's played out over and over again, the ancient script. You can put an end to it by not resenting him, waking up, not putting a resent, not adding any more fuel to the fire. Okay, then there's a chance he might wake up too. You both might wake up and live happily ever after. It could happen. Maybe he never will wake up. Or if you're the husband, maybe she'll never wake up. Okay, she'll remain uh, lost in her or he'll remain lost in his uh, um, pride and resentment and all that stuff. Well, but at least you can you can save yourself, and you can find a relationship with God. Okay, within. Remember, Christ said, "If you don't forgive others, your heavenly Father won't forgive you." Okay, so now you see how you mustn't resent your husband. Okay, don't resent anybody. Okay. Don't resent anyone from your past. Just let the resentment go. Okay, let it let it go. Make it unimportant. Try the meditation. Get a little closer to God. Okay, He's our heavenly Father. You know, our parents too. Ultimately, other people they can't do a lot for. See, we're always looking for something from other people. Okay, I can't blame the the. the uh, wife we're looking for love from her husband that's what he's supposed to have that special agape love but most men don't have it they just don't have it they can't give what they don't have okay so don't resent him remember Christ's word on the cross forgive them father they know not what they do okay forgive your husband he just when he was a little boy no one had love for him nobody explained things to him so okay um People are just lost sheep. Most people are. Okay, so we're always looking for something for them. Don't look for love from in the world. Okay, look to for love from your Creator. Find His love. Okay, then you'll have it made in the shade. My name is Rose.